Right, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about normals. So, I had a question uh, from a viewer asking, could we do, uh, can we affect an object's normals through the material? So, you might remember from the transfer attributes video a couple of weeks ago uh, that we kind of took a sphere and approximated the the vertex normals of our of our mesh into a, a sphere. Um, that's great really useful for controlling your shading, really good for things like foliage where you want to have lots of individual planes but kind of like have them light like a sphere uh, and we can, we can do that in the material so I have here just a, a group of planes that I've imported, could be grass, could be something else uh, and I want to stop them shading as, indi as individual planes and have them shade as a spherical object so if I take the world position and then I subtract the object pivot point And I just normalize it. Normalize. Plug that into the emissive just for now to preview. What's that going to give me? Well, it's basically what we're creating here is a world space normal. So if you have a look, if I just make another copy and rotate, you can see the what we're getting here. If we take the world position, so let's example take this pixel here that's rendering. Uh, we're subtracting the object pivot. Well, that's that point there. So we get a direction from one to the other, so we're getting the direction that this pixel is facing from the pivot, uh, and then we're just normalizing it to get just the direction. So what we've created here is the world space normal. Um, and if we bring in a sphere, just apply this to it, there you are, you see the sort of spherical nature of it. So this is actually called a spherical harmonic, so it's taking a single point in space and then working out how it would shade if there was a really sort of a sphere there or the directions to that. Um, now if I plug this into our normal input, we will get some results, but it won't be correct. And we'll explain why in a second. Um, so you can see it has affected the shading. We are doing the normal, so we are affecting the shading in some way. Um, but what's gone wrong? Well, this input here is looking for a tangent space normal map. So if I go in here, type normals. So by default, this is enabled, saying it's looking for a tangent space normal. If I turn that off, the input pin is now looking for a world space normal, and we have plugged in a world space normal. And you can hopefully see these two spheres are shading c completely the same, where this one we've re-derived the normals, and this one it's just using the normals as imported, which is a smooth sphere. So um, that's pretty cool. And you can see we're getting lighting here, which is along the light direction. So the bits that are closer and looking like they're lit um, are correct. Um, really cool, really nice. So, um, what else can we do with our normals? Uh, well, if I just go over here and have a look at these cubes, just to double check that this is actually doing what we want. So, this cube here, just imported it from Maya. Uh, here we are. If I go and have a look at, we have this smooth shaded cube. So I've just taken the edges and softened, and you get a smooth shaded cube. So now when I go back to Unreal, if I take my smooth shading here and apply it to this cube, which is just the basic cube from the editor, they should look exactly the same, and they do, which is pretty cool. So can we do the opposite? Can we take our soft cube and make it into a hard edged one? Well, the answer is yes, we can. So if I take the world position, uh, and then I'm going to take the screen space derivatives, DDX and DDY. Uh, don't worry, I'll explain what these are in a minute. And I'm going to do the cross product of those. So we're getting a little bit mathy here. And I'm just going to normalize. So whenever you're doing any kind of vector maths, you always want to normalize. The normal input should normalize for you anyway. But yeah, so here we are. So if I take this cube and I just apply that normal edit material, we get our hard edges. So so what's happening? Let's step through one by one. So DDX and DDY, these are the screen space derivatives. So what does that mean? Well, it's basically giving us the slope of the uh, of the pixel being rendered. So if I pop over to Maya and just have a look at this plane. No, nope, not that one. That one. Let's just create a new one. Create a new plane. So for example, DDX is giving me the slope of the plane in the x direction, so that's that kind of rotation. DDY is giving me the slope of the plane in this direction. Um, and then the cross product, if you remember, uh, it takes the takes two vectors 
and it gives you the third orthogonal vector. So if we give it x and y, it'll give us z. Uh, in that case, it gives us the normal of the face. Now, because we're doing this on the screen space derivatives, that's only looking at any of the polygons, uh, none of the normal map or smoothing kind of calculations or, or inputs that we've given it. So that's why we're getting our hard edges, because it's not looking at any of the uh, the vertex data that we've imported, it's just looking at the polygon as it's being rendered. So what we're doing there is recreating a hard edge. Um, if I find some where there's some shading on this cube, on the cube, on this sphere, you can see we're getting this faceted shading because we're rederiving those normals. Um, and because we've got two sets of normals, what we can do, which is kind of cool, is we can blend them together. So you can lerp them. So I can create a curvature parameter. And if I say zero curvature, I want to be faceted, and 100% curvature, I want to be curved. There we are. So I have faceted, now I have curved, and now I can kind of do this halfway house between the two, because I'm just blending linearly between those two sets of normals. Um, so a lot of control for when you're doing your kind of foliage shading, building some custom normal models for you. Um, all very cool. So, so why, when we're using our uh, normal maps normally, do we use a tangent space normal? Um, so if I just go in and find some clay bricks, uh, if I just plug this in, remember we're looking for a world space normal here and we've plugged in a tangent space normal. Um, I have a look at this object. It looks all right from these angles, but if I go to the back face, ah, something's gone wrong. Um, so what's happened here? Well, it's actually it's looking for, let's say, the world space normal. We've given it the tangent space normal, and we need to give it a transform. So if I go here and transform this, the default settings for transform are tangent to world. That will do a calculation, and then give us the correct kind of normal. So um, if I just preview this. You'll see that the face pointing in the x direction will be red, and the green will be in the y will be green, and blue will be z. So you can see this is the world space normal. So it's the direction of the face pointing in world space relative to the world axes, uh, whereas this is just the tangent space normal. So this is the direction the face is pointing, or the the pixels are, are pointing. Um, relative to the face. So the reason we do that is just because it's easier to work with and in fact if you go in here to this normal it even says tangent space requires extra instructions but is often more convenient so it's much easier for us to bake a normal map that's relative to itself uh, and then let the computer do the calculations for us than it is to do these things but if we're working with our our world space normals here um, we need to work with our world space normals here so um, if I just quickly normalize these, um, if I then wanted to combine these, we could do that. So I could take my tangent, uh, my sort of my soft normals and my hard normals, blend them between, and I'm just going to add these over the top um, to give me some detailed normals. And so I should be able to get a nice kind of hard surfaced brick normals on top or soft surfaced with brick normals on top. Now you might have noticed over here there's a little bit of an error. What's happening here? We weren't getting this before. So because we've re-derived these flat normals, when we're combining them with our our normal map, we actually need to take into account the different facing and the different sides of our two-sided material. So um, simple way to do that, there is a two-sided sign in here. So if I take my normal map, what I'm going to do is actually I want to invert the blue channel. So to do that, I multiply by minus 1 in blue. I can just preview this. So this old preview is going to go wrong. So hopefully now this side looks correct, which it does, and the other side looks wrong. So now we need to blend between the two uh, either corrected or uncorrected normal based on the two-sided sign. So what the two-sided sign will give us is a value of plus one for the front face and minus one for the back face. So in fact, all we need to do is append our two-sided sign onto a, a two vector of one. So now on the front faces, we have a one, 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 
multiplying by that will give us no change at all, which is exactly what we want. And on the back face we get 1, 1, minus 1, and now we're getting our back face normals rendering correctly uh, when we're using that hard edge. So sometimes the thing you have to do with um, when you're doing vector maths with two-sided materials, um, because the back face, the normal vector is inverted. Um, so often with Fresnel you have to do these kinds of things as well. So, But now we can go in, create a nice curvy soft thing, and we're still getting that normal map being applied to our object. Um, all pretty cool. Um, one last thing, we've been using our grass planes as an example. Well, actually sometimes with grass you don't really want to have this um, 3D shading or anything. You might just literally want an up vector. And so what we're going to do here, uh, let's get rid of that as well. So I'm just going to take in, just plug in, weld up, and it's going to try and shade my grass as if it's the same as the plane underneath. So we are getting some errors here with shadows. So if I turn those off, um, you can see there's still some ambient occlusion. There's some screen space ambient and things, so it's not perfect, but hopefully you can see if you have a lot of small grass meshes you actually want the grass meshes to light as if they're on the ground so you want them to light the same as the ground you don't want to see hard edges from the planes and you can do it like this and maybe we want to do is actually some kind of blend between the spherical and the health the up spherical and up so it's no longer called curvature well, it's no longer the curvature but the name doesn't matter for now And so you can blend a little bit between 3D spherical. Uh, and there's nothing stopping us masking this with a height mask. You could use vertex colors, whatever is necessary for your individual um, project. But hopefully, if I start creating a few of these around, you can kind of see that we'll get quite a nice result where rather than being a normally shaded I just turn this off. Should just shade as if they're flat planes. Yeah, you can see here. Really weird back facing happening. And obviously the two sided foliage model can help with this as well. But grass doesn't really get shadowed on its back face. Or at least it doesn't in reality exist as planes. So our approximation using planes kind of needs some, some help to get the foliage shading to work right. Um this looks really bad. It just looks like a bunch of planes on the floor. But if we plug this in instead here we're approximating half or sort of a blend between completely flat pointing upwards or spherical harmonics from that point and we can get a much nicer result for our grass shading and once you've got textures and things on top of that that'll definitely help as well so um hope that helps got a little bit mathy today looking at screen space derivatives and uh, normal world space tangents and all that kind of stuff so um, but really useful to you know really helpful for doing things like uh, yeah foliage shading grass and tree canopies and stuff like that but um, yeah any questions comments let me know below or send me an email uh, and I will see you all next time